Secret Friends Unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 430. This is your guide to the geek side, and I'm one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, living beautifully in Savage, Minnesota, with a now senior who uh, my son just graduated, so we are all relieved from the uh, pressures of a, junior year. A senior? He's 65? I thought he was Absolutely. 17. He can retire, and oh, AARP has put him on their list uh, of the people list. that should use their services. Yes, the and the person that's asking me these, these, me these questions is Charlie Carton. What's up, y'all? Man, oh man, Charlie. We're in the dog days of summer. Is that what they call the beginning of summer? I thought, the, it's the, I thought it's, that was the end. Because we're just, it, it's well, because yeah. I think it's tied to like Sirius, the the dog star. I think is what it's oh, actually tied to. Gotcha. But so it's, that's it's, it's been, a, like horribly hot, and it's not right. bad right now. But you yeah, know, it's, it's good right now. And just looking at the yeah things, as, as always, this has devolved into weather talk. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, you know, we're old, and that's what uh, that's what old well, people do. Well, we could do the the blame Canada segment. We just talk about their wildfires. But you know, at this point, oh, that's why right. beat up Canada? You right. know, they're, they they got enough going on, no doubt about exactly. it. And we've got plenty going on. Always giving love and thanks to our Patreons. You know, for about six months now, we have been producing extra content uh over at patreon.com slash secret friends unite thanks to the support of these wonderful people i am of course talking about uh jamie prinky over on the best buds level and on our esteemed bffs level the nias family of sean stella and henry my dear friend missy merchant and her friend andy milliken we are grateful for you and todd what else is going on with patreon that day that's these days that's such such big news well, Charlie, you know me. I'm I'm a deal meister. I the love slinger. the deals. Yes. So um, we're big fans of free trials on other services just to see, you know, HBO Max, you know, they're doing Disney Plus, whatever. But you know what? Who's doing a free trial now for everyone to check out our podcast content on Patreon? We are. So Patreon now made it, makes it really easy. Just go to patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite. And actually, before you spend a dime, you can just put uh, select a tier. I believe it's on all tiers. You can yep. just go to that and uh, you get a free week before you are charged as a listener. So we'd love it if you stick around. But if not, you know, you listen and you're like, I got what I wanted out of it. Share with your friends. Tell them to check yes, out please. Secret Friends Unite on Patreon. And do remember some of our great content does include interviews uh, that I do with my partners, Missy and Kay, uh, which have included Doug Jones, uh, Tara Rosling, and other actors in the uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, and genre universe. I do a great show called The Facts of Geek Life, which talks about classic television programs, a handful of episodes from a particular season. And I have a semi-regular uh, show I do with my wife, April, called A Bad Trip to the Movies with the Cardins, where we slice up a terrible film for your immune amusement we've got one coming up called wing commander we're trying to get todd to join in with us but we'll have to see what happens yes um yes that that's a movie i think i think it's classified yes. as a movie maybe yes. maybe not um movie. yeah and then uh we do uh spinner rack uh, charlie and i and then we brought in guests and everything like that to talk about a specific comic book arc um and it's going to be funny because we're actually our next episode which will be coming out in not this Friday, but the following Friday will be all about Nick Fury. It'll be yes. a selection of his comic book career and history because Secret Invasion is coming out at the uh, in, end, close to end of June. So we thought yeah. it's a good pe time to give people, you know, how Nick Fury is in the comics versus on the silver screen. Yes, yes. I think I think it's actually coming out. Is it coming out the 16th? I thought it was the 21st. Oh, I think it's the 16th, but I think it's Friday show. But I we, don't know we, how we'll ever know. We will find out. Uh, you can find out by using the Googs. But one thing you can also find out by using the Googs is this week's cover uh, in our We Got This Covered segment, February 1961, DC Comics Showcase. Um, DC, I'm looking at the logo, DC Net Superman National Comics is what they were calling themselves at that time. Yeah, it was a weird thing because DC was Detective Comics. That's what we thought, right. I think, at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so this one was an interesting book. It's Aquaman and Law, Aqualad. Uh, it's Showcase Presents. So Showcase was kind of like their title where it's like Marvel Comics Presents where they would have yeah, yeah. a rotating different group of um, superheroes. They would stay on for a time and they would position, pivot off. And they typically had a selection of stories. And this one specifically, um, it's got a couple things going for it. 
It's got a great cover, um, so yeah. we'll give it to them. Love that. But it's also the first appearance of Aqualad, which is interesting. Oh, nice. Okay. And uh, apparently it's got The Creatures from Atlantis, a three-part novel, including the origin of novel. Aquaman. Oh, my god. It's a novel? Three wow. novels, in cl- three-part novel, Charlie. Oh. So the, I mean, no pictures. You just open it up, and it's just a bunch of words. I, I love these these creatures. And we were talking in the pre-roll about uh, Jaws because Todd and I were bouncing off about an upcoming segment uh, of the Facts Geek Life where we talk about Sequest DSV. Very exciting. Um, but these, these sea creatures, as you can see if you're looking at our YouTube channel, appear to be – like some kind of fish bat like looking creature, but they're bipeds. They have arms and legs and, and it, it, it looked like they would, you know, they would stand direct on, on those two legs, but like tails knock off Godzilla's. The, yeah. Tails and they're purple, but yeah, the faces look very, almost like a bat, almost like a chimpanzee. If you look with the big, the kind of the big, like Homer Simpson looking kind of mouthpiece. I well, don't know. Aqualad agrees, Charlie, because he said, uh, no, no, Aquaman, you can't attack those weird creatures single handedly. Weird. That seems very discriminatory. Does not hold up in this day and age. Shame on you, Aqualad. For that's what they're be- saying. When they when those creatures look at Aqualad, that's what they're saying. Yeah. Those weird looking creatures. Not being very inclusive. Obviously, just looking at things from your own perspective is not very healthy. It's not. Oh, Charlie, aggressive. one note before we move on. You know, it's the 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 super. Super huge comics code is right there in the corner. But did you notice in um, Across the Spider-Verse, they also had the comics code, which I oh, thought was bet. hilarious. I 100 percent dead ass think that the comics code is is just not a thing anymore. I, I think I you pay for it. Like it was yeah. just something you like you had to pay to yeah. be part of it. So and I don't know. And there was people like that used to be like the the practices and standards people. Right. Um, right. But uh, quite honestly, I don't know how often they actually did their yeah. job. I just don't honestly think that even when it was a thing, I just, I don't Wouldn't it be know awesome to find more. somebody that actually worked at that office and ask yeah, them all oh these questions. God. Oh, geez. Ooh, Ooh. that would be a fantastic interview. My for goodness. Sterek. You oh know what? Goodness. Hey, out there on uh, Twitter, if you're listening to us, uh, we are of course at uh, secret friends, you um, hit us up. Uh, if you, for some reason, know anyone who's ever been involved with the actual Comics Code Authority, we would love to hear about that. We will absolutely dedicate a program um, to that. So anyway, um, you know, barring that, if nobody gets in touch with us about that, potentially our senior news correspondent who has been reporting the news since the early 1900s, I'm talking about Madam Webb, maybe she can find something for us. I mean, she has sources far and wide, but she's these days down at the corner of Hollywood and Vibe, bringing us the hottest scoops uh, in her new segment. Let's go. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. I believe, Charlie, that Madam Webb actually was fined by the Comics Code Authority. Um, uh, Yes, she was um, she was a comic book writer back on Little Lulu back in the day. And (laughs) and unfortunately, uh, her proposed uh, story of Little Lulu makes a drug deal was apparently not approved by the Comics Code. So they actually Little little Lulu gets shanked in an alleyway. (laughs) And they had they had to change it to makes a lemonade stand deal. So oh, there you go. Uh, yeah. Yes, I don't know. I think it was like twenty cents back then. But you know what? She's still bitter after all those years De- dealing drugs out of a lemonade stand. Not super cool. All right, what do we got up first? Yes. So first story is after the rousing success of the Super Mario Brothers movie, which now is I believe at one point three billion dollars, the highest. Uh, ranking uh, video game movie now of all time. Not easy to do. Uh, Or or easy to do because the high bar from that was Warcraft, a movie that was not great in the States, but made a lot of money overseas. Um, But uh, now I believe um, because of that, Nintendo wants to go all in on their Nintendo Cinematic Universe, as we're calling it, I guess. Um, and it's funny the, the the owner of Nintendo, or the, the the I guess the creative genius Miyamoto calls he, he doesn't call his um, creations like creations. He calls them um, like he calls them the cast of Nintendo. So he almost treats them like they're actors, which is like which the, I think is which is funny, right? The the universe of stars, like back in the exactly. old day, back in the old day, how certain actors or actresses would be beholden to a studio, Universal or Arcane, or they'd be called or TV's right? Scott Bakula, like he was right. owned by TV, right? Which or, I thought was weird. Battle of the Network Stars, remember that? Oh, thing? absolutely. If you were on, on a network, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So exactly. we. we we are hearing that Universal also wants to be in the Nintendo business. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, they do very well. Uh, Illumination is their animation studio. They uh, have had a close relationship. That's why Super Mario Brothers movies worked, because they were not going to let anything go out the door 
that didn't fit Nintendo's vision, kind of like the old Super Mario Brothers movie, and also the really horrible Legend of Zelda cartoon back in the day where Link was known to say things like, excuse me, princess. I mean, totally like totally like things you're like, oh, oh boy, this is it, a bad sitcom. That seems like it should be followed by a laugh track. Ooh. It, it kind of was back in those. Applause, but that, you know, that was like applause. 80s. 80s cartoons yeah. weren't good. We know that. So, but for yeah. some reason, Nintendo holds a grudge like 30 years later. But uh, the, apparently their next movie they would like to dig into is The Legend of Zelda. So, Charlie, I, I don't know if you know much about the franchise. Um, maybe it's maybe largely it's it's Link is the, your hero. He is essentially a link to the player. That's why his name was Link. So that was kind of clever. Uh, and then Princess Zelda is the Legend of Zelda. So everybody's always thinking, yeah. oh, yeah. Zelda's Zelda's not a, a boy. No, Zelda is the princess. And I don't know why they call it the Legend of Zelda. It's really the Legend of Link. But regardless of that, Link is a silent protagonist. At most, Charlie, all he said when he's in a video game is, Ugh! <clears throat> I mean, that's it. Oh, he doesn't so have any so dialogue. It was like those old uh, Lego video games before they started looping in dialogue. They would just go, eh. Absolutely. <laughs> You're 100% yeah. right. Like, he, there'd be like, oh, Link's going to explain the situation. He just stares there and looks at the person. And the person, like, three seconds later, would go, oh, that's good to know that the princess oh, is in another castle. It's totally, it's like, so he was, he was a mute telepath. He was like, I'm guessing that's one of his abilities. But I always thought it was weird because, like, as as Legend of Zelda has gotten more cinematic, has gotten more, like, they they finally given some people voices, but not all the time. It's very weird. And Link still doesn't have a voice. So it's very weird. So if we're going to make uh, a Legend of Zelda movie and they want to be beholden to everything that's ever happened on video screen, video uh, game screen, I'm just curious if they will um, go forward and give Link a voice or they'll will keep it as it has been, and he won't be, it won't have a voice like a silent protagonist. Or yeah. will they do part way, like kind of like a character like The Witcher, where he's a man of few words, or other characters, you know, that are uh, men of few words, like Dirty Harry or something like that. So I don't know how that will go. Yeah. But do you do you feel lucky? Insert name of character here, since I don't know any <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Ganon? Uh, no. Yeah, um, there you go. But yeah, Ganon, and Ganon's going to be voiced by like some goofy person. And this is the, this is yeah, Nintendo right. fans' worst fear, Charlie, is like it, they'll get like the, like, Kevin Hart is Link. Oh, and, God. Oh. <laughs> exactly. And here's and Dwayne Johnson and, uh, oh, God, throw out another name of something. Uh, John Cena. It'll be all exactly. of them. Exactly. Or yeah. even, even like, you know, even like. Uh, Kevin Hart. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Because I think that's what people are saying. Well, because that was when the, when the when the Super Mario Brothers movie came out. Like, yeah. Chris Pratt is Mario. People just couldn't believe it. Oh, it's, or it's, you know, Jack Black and all these other, Seth oh, Rogen is Donkey Kong. So people were like fearing the worst and obviously it worked right. pretty well um right so i'm wondering so i mean i'm thinking of charlie other silent protagonists in in genre and the one that comes to my mind is snake eyes right sure and boy did that not work on the big screen because what did and they because, do charlie what did they do with snake eyes well, they, they made it a regular boring ass vanilla like action ninja movie it had that had absolutely nothing to do there were no elements of that character in that movie at all if you follow his his the only origin he has is the Larry Hamer written origin. Larry Hamer also very shamelessly had a walk on cameo in that. And then on all his social media was like, oh, my God, you got to go see this movie. Um, I've met Mary, Larry Hamer. I like Larry Hamer very much. I enjoyed spending time with him. Larry yeah, Lama. Let Larry Lama. Uh, this was um, yeah, that's going back a couple of years. And that's I talked about it at the time. Wow. Yeah. Not not a great film. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we did. I mean, we did get one issue of G.I. Joe, which I remember was very iconic, where it was a silent issue with Snake right. Eyes, the protagonist. Yeah. Um, issue issue 21. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, so we haven't seen really a great movie where the silent, the protagonist is silent. Um, I, th I what is it. Jay and Silent Bob. I mean, Silent Bob does have. The one thing to say typically in in, in a movie, right. um, typically he's like limited to like one line or something like that, except for the last movie, um, right. which, you know, he was very verbose in that. But um, with that, I, I uh, my my own hope is um, it is a different tone than the Super Mario Brothers movie, because that was a very much like a, oh, you remember that? You remember that, kids? You remember that, kids? It was it was kind of the member berries of a movie, which is they did it well. But with Zelda, I don't think you can do that because it's it's a much more serious tone. It is in fantasy adventure um with some tragedy and things um so i hope they take the right approach and they don't shy away from giving him a voice because guess what nintendo they actually hire people 
that are great voice directors. They can hire great actors who are unknown that can do well in the part. So trust yeah. them. Don't trust right. the guy who designed Donkey Kong because he thought Mario was his neighborhood plumber. That's a true story. Right. That's how Mario – because Miyamoto had a plumber named Mario. Oh, You're in no. my game. <laughs> that was no, his background yeah. story. <laughs> that's like – that's like, you know, George Lucas and his, you know, Alaskan Meow Mute named Indiana. There, yes. that's that's exactly where that came from. So, Absolutely. all right, all right. What do we got moving on? Oh, this is exciting. I love to talk about this. Now, I have talked time time and again how uh, my lovely wife April is uh, and has been her entire life a huge Stephen King fan. And then, Todd, you dropped this one on me. You had a source article that said, "Yeah, you need to go see this right away," and listed no date. So I'm like, oh, or where I would find it. But there is uh, there's a documentary coming out about the life and times of uh, famed novelist Stephen King who is, I believe, his first, I think his first novel was Carrie, uh, dropped in the early 70s. So that's now 50 uh-huh. years gone by, 50 years uh, of writing. It says upwards of 80 books. Um, but it actually did find out that this um, this documentary, which is pretty much um, comprised of uh, interviews with other filmmakers who he's worked with, who's influenced him, including uh, Frank Darabont, who gave us The Walking Dead and then got dropped from it. Uh, to- Tom, not Tom Holland, not Spider Man. The Langoliers. We watched that not that long ago. Cool story. Really bad TV movie from 1995. Uh, Mick Garris, who did the recent version of The Stand. Taylor Hackford, who was a big action director in the 80s and 90s, um, did Dolores Claiborne and Ray. Ray? That's not one of his movies. Did he? <laughs> did he have a version of Ray? <laughs> uh, yes. It was. The, it was the. It was the NC-17 horror oh slasher. Gosh. Uh, torture porn version of oh my gosh. history. Well, we also have great interviews in here by, oh, and, and some folks posthumously, uh, interviews with Greg Nicotero, who's a, a creature feature guy, Walking Dead. Uh, Dee Wallace, who is the star of Cujo, the mom. Uh, the late Tim Curry, needs no introduction. And Jimmy Kahn. Um, this is great. This uh, will have a limited theatrical release on August 11 and then be, will be available for purchase on digital and Blu-ray in September. So I am all over this. This seems fantastic. I love Stephen King. I always make the joke and April rolls her eyes. I said, Oh, a new, a new Stephen King project. What main town with a sheriff and a preacher is this set in? <laughs> because that is the setting of damn near almost anything he does. But yeah, uh, you know what? That's okay. It's like M. Night Shyamalan and, and, and anything in and around Metro Philadelphia. That's where you can find his stuff. You're right. Yeah, what you know. I will be curious uh, to see if Stephen King truly was involved in this or it's truly right. just about him because right, Stephen right, King right, has right. had a rocky relationship with the people that have brought his his visions to screen. Yeah, the most yeah. famous is, is, is The Shining. Oh, God. With, yes. uh, I mean, that movie – Everyone loved it except for Stephen King. Right, I think. exactly. It's a claim. You know what, Todd? And, yeah. You you could almost say that he is the Todd Oxtra of his own work, the the iconoclast, the mm. one who says everybody loves blank Star Wars. Todd says, hmm, I don't think I love blank Star Wars, and that and that's fine. Um, but it would just it would suck if it was your own work. You're like, well, that's not what I meant by that. But exactly. you're right. Everybody lo- who doesn't love The Shining. Have you met anybody else who doesn't like that movie? I don't think so. Um, yeah, I, I can't. And it's a kind of Shelley Duvall, though. I guess maybe she doesn't either because she's she's oh, well, she, she, she was she was di- yeah, deeply emotionally abused by uh, God. Who's the director? Very famous dude. Kubrick. It's Kubrick. It's yeah. Kubrick. Yeah. And he, the late Stanley Kubrick, who was a legendary yep. director, but apparently like many art- artists and auteurs, not a great guy. But it happens. Um, but yeah, I, I can't wait for this. And again, yeah, that we're we're due to get this uh, so limited- streaming. I don't know if that means it's just VOD on on demand. Like, oh, you, you yeah, buy no, it. It's, yeah, I, yeah, I I don't know. Uh, it's entirely possible it could end up somewhere uh, for a regular streamer, but that might be years. I expect it'll so. go to Shutter probably because they yeah. love they're, they're the horror channel, and, and you yeah. get them on you get Shutter content on AMC Plus, which I think is like oh, five gotcha. bucks a month or something like that. It's we, not expensive. AM, AMC Plus and stars are bundled right now or at least they mm. were recently through amazon prime which we picked up because walking dead and then outlander is going to be back todd the, the, the show you'll never watch but my wife loves um but uh oh my goodness so anyway i'm very excited for that um so we will see that come august and or september todd this next one is all you hits very closely to home too not yes, that you talk a lot t- not, yeah not that you talk a lot about what you do for a living because we try to be a little guarded but still 
Yes. Go for it. Uh, this is my cheap chill moment of of the podcast. I really do this. I I, I don't chill want it. to put. I don't want to say one thing or not about the company I work for. I work for General Mills, who makes many iconic brands. Uh, think yep. of all the cereals, uh, El Paso, Nature Valley, things like that. But um, when it's something that I loved before I joined the company, I'm still into it. I I've always loved the General Mills mascots. Their their characters like Lucky the Leprechaun, um, you know, Busby, all of those characters. But Busby. one of my favorites has always been the monster cereals. I just thought they were so cool, so fun yeah, playing Frank with all these and, things. Frank and Barry and in that Count Chocula, yeah, Count I mean, Chocula, Boo Berry. Yeah. Uh, we had Fruit yeah. Brut, we had Yummy Mummy, and Fruit those two kind of yeah. went away. And Fruit uh, was yeah. uh, was really legendarized by a quick appearance in. Um, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. A, a, yeah, a commercial you saw on TV. That's and right. Tyler, and it, it just throws me right back to thinking about those classic itchy and scratchy characters like um, Disgruntled Goat, uh, Rich Uncle Skeleton, Adam Ant. <laughs> Edmund. <laughs> Edmund. Say, yes. Which I thought when, I, when the, we have the song, song uh, writer and singer Adam Ant, I always think of, oh, it's Adamant. He's I'm Adamant. S- I'm very adamant that I want money. Yes. Anyway, I love this it. is fun. Yes. So what, what do we? What do you got? What do you got? Yeah. So the monsters have typically had those five characters over their oh wow so long, um, you know, thirty five years. This the brand wow. has basically been doing this, and they went from being around all year round to just seasonal, which is the right move because who wants right. monster cereals in February? Nobody. So uh, and they've done some things over the years. They keep reinventing the brand, um, and one what they're doing this year is kind of a, a milestone. It's very iconic. This is the first time they are creating a new monster that is also a female monster, which is about time. I'm just reading ahead of this bio. This is awesome, if I might. Uh, yes. Her name is Carmela Creeper, first new character in 35 years, long lost cousin of Frankenberry, as well as a zombie DJ with an edgy sound who is always a life of the party. Now, Todd, I, April and I gave up eating cereal a number of years ago. We're just, we we eat a very strict diet. You know, in the morning, we'll, we'll have eggs, we'll have oatmeal, we'll have protein, whatever, maybe yogurt, but... <sighs> This is kind of tempting to just get it's, a, it's a treat. Yeah, it's a treat it's, once in a while. Get a, yeah. get a very small box of this. Um, now you see her. Now, so her brand is going to be Monster Mash Remix cereal. So she's no, on the, uh, she oh, okay. she will have her own cereal. It's going to be okay, Caramel Creeper. Okay. It's Caramel Apple cereal. So that's kind of a different God. flavor than we've had before. That's interesting. And they are also doing something they brought back. They brought out about six years ago, seven years ago, called Monster Mash. And it's essentially where they okay. put all of the cereals together in one box, which is so very it's, fun. It's yes. it's kind of one of these oops, all crunch berries kind of deals. Kind of, yeah. And they're calling it the remix because, well, she's a DJ and we've got all the monsters yeah. back again. So, oh, my um, God. This is fantastic. Yes. Yeah, it's Todd, a lot of fun. And they've done I, lots I of do, media. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the, yeah. if you go back, the, the history of monsters. But one of my favorite bits, Charlie, is yeah. there was a, a Daily Show bit Stephen Colbert was was a uh, he was a uh, at the time he was a correspondent I guess oh okay and so way back he thought yeah. there was he thought there was a, a a conspiracy or something about why you couldn't find Booberry so it's so hilarious he just goes to stores finding it and he's like trying to be undercover where he's got like a hat with a camera but it's like a oh. cowboy hat <laughs> oh like in like in the, in the courtroom in The Simpsons uh, oh I, I'm a reporter I'm gonna have to ask you to leave do I have to take my hidden camera with me would you mind it's a guy wearing a ten gallon hat with a camera yeah out front. <laughs> Uh, it's so great. Uh, and I will say, if you are into Halloween stuff like this, this glitchy stuff, there's a website I go to. It's called Dinosaur Dracula. It's absolutely hilarious. They really get into the season. They talk about all the different offerings for spooky time, and and they do a purple stuff podcast, which is just that type of discussions. They're very good. Check them out. They're all over this. They typically get samples, too, to try and have things. Yeah. So, but I love this. Oh um, and wow. so this should be out knowing the production cycling uh this will most likely start going out in um september to store nice. so it's time for spooky time and then it's gotcha. typically then it's on <laughs> discount <laughs> after october 31st <laughs> oh boy discounted not yet expired cereal i am exactly all over. now todd can, can you score some samples or they, did they hook you up or not, so um, not any longer but typically they would bring in samples to the headquarters and give away boxes to employees so right. that's yeah all right See what turns out. All right, I'm moving on to the next story now. I will. I will admit, uh, with the caveat that I, I'm trying to report this somewhat unbiasedly because I know for a fact uh, this is kind of where we become shills to our sponsors. I know very much for a fact that both Missy 
and Jamie Prinky are such big fans of Hocus Pocus that they, they uh, I know just even earlier this year, they attended um, a con, you know, basically a convention event where Doug Jones and, and you know, Lee Ehrenberg and sure. a lot of the other people that we've talked to uh, on our shows were in attendance in celebration of, uh, of uh, what role Hocus did Lee play in that? I can't remember. Uh, now I'm drawing a blank. Um, but I feel like he was involved in some fashion. I feel bad we did that interview, but, and I have a signed photo of Lee behind me. If you can see it, do you see it there? It's all, uh, all the way in the back, all the way in the back corner because he was at that sure. event and Missy got that for us. And it says to fleet captain Charlie Carden. That was, that was my rank at the time. And captain April Carden, it said Ferengi's rule. And it's a picture of him as a Ferengi from, from an episode of Star Trek, the next generation, super cool guy. Oh my gosh. But anyway, that is an interview that is on our Patreon. If you happen to grab that free trial, you can check it out. But anyway, um, Hocus Pocus two, uh, came out on Disney plus either earlier this year at the end of probably last Halloween, if I'm not mistaken, because when the hell else would it come out? Right. Um, mm-hmm. And now there is, to, I, 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 w- I personally was not a fan. I wasn't a huge fan of the first one. Again, it was 1993. Uh, I was 17. I was in high school. I was never a big Disney we weren't a big Disney household, Todd. I don't know about you, but we were a Star Wars, Star Trek, GI Joe, some you know Transformers. We were a Marvel comics. That that was our household. That's what we enjoyed. So the Disney movies, the animated Little Mermaid, you know, uh-huh. and uh, Aladdin and stuff. That was just was not really the vibe between my brother and I and my mom here in this house. Um, but Todd, where did you stand with Hocus Pocus back then? You were you, you were getting out of high school. Where was it on your radar? Yeah, it was really not in my radar either. I know it existed. I think I saw the trailer. I'm like, oh, it looks cute. And never thought it again. Then I got married um, and a lot of females. uh, And I mean, there's guys too, but it's It's very very big big within a certain community that loves the spooky, the the Nightmare Before Christmas, that type of crowd, which I love that. It's kind of like it's more spooky than scary, as I would call it. It's very, it's very um, whimsical. In it, right. kind of with a dark tone. So, um, right. I, I so I, I finally did see the first movie because I only saw bits and pieces as my wife would watch it. Never really sure. paid attention, so I finally saw that. And then, um, or maybe I didn't. I can't remember. T- that's how bad it is, Charlie. I don't remember yeah, if I actually even saw enjoyable. the whole thing. Well, like but I know I said, parts yeah. of it. But the second one, I did watch, and I, it was a movie. It, you know it what? It was is, a movie. And again, I think much like many things genre related star wars is a great version of it star trek is a great version of it there is a lot of like you say nostalgia gaggles there it, goggle gaggles um maybe even more so when you have a single film from 30 years ago and you bring uh-huh. back a second one your your diehards and like i said i'd never met someone who is a die die hard fan of that film until missy and i became close friends and then i met yeah. jamie through her my god uh-huh. they absolutely love it it's it's religion to them and you know what absolutely mad respect for that but yeah for me watching the sex this the second film i was like I yeah. just it just didn't click with me. It, so anyway, it played it played to the I think played to fans and also right. a younger crowd. So I exactly. think it's trying to hit both of those things. Yeah, right now uh, now it's being announced that a third film is being uh, being uh, produced or being talked about with the second film's director and Fletcher and its writer Jen D'Angelo. Now this is news that says, oh gosh, we're shooting uh, for an October 2024 release. Uh, not saying that if the the original stars the stars both films, Bette Midler, Kathy and Jimmy, and Sarah Jessica Parker would be involved. But let's not forget that nothing is being written right now. No. No, so I think you unless can they wrote it at the time, yeah. unless they wrote the the the, the third movie yeah, while they were is, making yeah. this movie. But yeah. again, it's being announced that this is being developed, not that it's been produced. So sure. I think their uh, their projection for this being out in 2024 might have to be amended to 2025. But regardless, it is being made at some juncture. Um, and to Missy and to Jamie and to to Andy uh, Milliken, our other great Patreon, and everybody else who loves Hocus Pocus, we here at Secret Friends are always very dedicated to loving what you love, to not yucking other people's yum, even though sometimes we fall a little bit off that wagon. I'd like to think that we always find our way back. So if this n- news is exciting to you, you know what? As, as, as content creators, as people of the world, journalists of the genre, it's our job to simply bring you the news, even if we spin it a little bit too heavily. But you know what? Get excited because this is apparently happening. So uh, button up. And, of course, it will be on Disney+, Plus, which everybody has anyway. Okay, absolutely. Todd, Todd last story. Show I have not watched. Is this a Todd show? Have you seen like an episode? 
Or did you watch uh, the I've seen almost the whole first season. It's a okay. book series I know very well. Okay. Um, it's a cool cow- collaboration. So uh, Good Omens uh, is yeah. a book series collaboration between Neil Gaiman and I believe it's Terry Pratchett. Yeah, I yeah. believe was the other writer. And it's essentially a very fun story, kind of tongue in cheek. That's what a lot of Terry Pratchett stuff is. He does the Discworld thing. So he's, he's passed along. But um, And it's all about... Uh, basically the end of the world between and it's about a friendship and i'd say a troublesome friendship between an angel and demon and oh my god it's, Todd, it's, it's you and me <laughs> yeah and it's and the, the cast is great like john ham he plays the upper management of you know of heaven and then we've got uh michael uh, I'm always blanking on his name. Um, Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen, who's been many different roles. He, he's he's yes. a very fine actor. He Great. plays yep. uh, the angel. And uh, uh, as Raphael, as he Raphael <laughs> is the name of him. And then. Yeah, uh, I was. That, lo- that, that looks like that 100% looks like a prescription drug to cover cholesterol. Mm, exactly. I'm yeah. As a Raphael to you. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Demon, uh, the Demon Crowley is played by David Tennant. Um, this is alone is worth it just to see these two actors on screen together doing Absolutely. their thing they're full in it's got a good sense of humor it kind of reminds me of a more humorous type of doctor who type of thing yeah. um and they just go through time and you see their relationships and kind of trying to avert essentially the antichrist from coming and let's just say charlie mistakes are made along the way I, <laughs> and it's I very good it. and yeah, so it's a great show. It's yeah. on Amazon Prime. First yeah. season's already out, and then uh, this comes out July twenty eighth. Okay, and um, I don't remember how they drop. They they don't do the all at once, but they may do a couple well, or a yeah, few. They at did lunch. like my most the, the most recent uh, Amazon Prime show that I was absolutely crazy about, which was Daisy Jones and the Six. They did it so weird. It was like four, two, three, two. It was it was I just like why so the whole thing was out in a month and it was yeah. like I, I mean i don't it, know it, it could have been stretched out i understand that like oh, okay well episodes two and three you know or episodes five and six you know definitely it's it's a plus to see them all at the same time but yeah i just i don't know i don't know it's but, it's yeah it's it's weird because like both it's amazon and apple yeah, it's that's not their main business. Their main business is selling ads and selling devices, whereas right. everybody else is they're just selling content. So I think right. they're in the like it in the thing. Look, we can do whatever we want because people right. are getting their groceries delivered, all that stuff. Oh, my God. Um, it, yeah, yeah. Amazon it, it is really. Yeah, they just couldn't do it. They, they could probably they, they could probably sell that series and get people to watch a series of like a, the, the burning, you know, Yule log fireplace at Christmas time. Pretty much, yeah. The haunted Yule log at, at yeah. Halloween. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So this yeah. looks like fun. This might actually get me to. to I think you should watch. watch I think yeah. it, I, it's very light. It's the episodes aren't yeah. too long, and I think it's light in nature. So it's not like oh, and there's not a big like oh, I have to know anything about this franchise. It's essentially yeah. what it is what it is. Good deal. I like it. Well, cool. Well, hey, that is the end of the news. Todd, time to pack it up. Get out that feeble Uber app. I think it's your turn to pay. But we've got to get down to Scugsville, nasty town. The geek easy awaits for us to talk about things we're enjoying in the last seven days. So let's go. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting in the geek easy. Cover band's playing. Drinks are poured. And we are getting ready to rock with what we've been geeking out about. So, Charlie, kick us off. Oh, my gosh. So I took a huge step forward in my my my, my nerdedum of, of of actual cred this week. A uh, friend of the show and tad friend of ours, we've met him both uh, at C2E2. Um, talk about Kurt Krug. He's a member of the uh, he's a, a, a member of my crew on the Grand Petoskey. We were all at Michigan State at the same time, though. I he I would mm. be challenged to remember if we ever met i can't even really remember how we met in modern day um but anyway he's a cool dude detroit based he is a freelance journalist and he has all kinds of ties with the big studios uh does a lot of screeners for movies does a lot of screeners for tv shows he's been trying for about a better part of a year to hook me up with um with the kind of stuff that he does because i have a background in journalism too uh even though i'm not quote unquote practicing uh even though i do this i'm not you know writing columns and getting published and that kind of stuff it's just not my world uh in this day and age but he was successful after four or five attempts with different people at paramount viacom in getting me set up with um, screeners for Star Trek shows, and he was successful. I got a screener earlier this week that contains the first six episodes of Strange New Worlds season two, um, and I was just I was elated. 
it was cool. And Todd, I was breaking it down for you, the process. The way screeners uh, work, at least in this instance, is that um, I got a link from the Paramount Viacom people. And uh, from now on, you will see me wearing a Star Trek badge probably in every recording I do to show my appreciation and respect for Paramount Viacom for the respect, the, the, what they've invested in me. I'm very grateful. The way Charlie's not biased at all. That's okay. <laughs> no, none of it. You know what? When you're a journalist, no, you report fairly. It's exactly what we were just talking about. But I, I don't think you're actually supposed to rep anything though as a journalist to show your non-bias. But kind of like how it, they say, Charlie Carden is owned by the Paramount Plus Corporation. <laughs> you'll see. You'll Well, but I mean, if you wear a Star Trek shirt or a Star Wars shirt, doesn't that somewhat imply some kind of something if you're in now you just have to wear blank say, t-shirts charlie that's what yeah. it is now that, blank that, t-shirts. that is yeah. actually what i did last time which funny because the way if i don't tilt my camera down you just kind of get my head but anyway the screen the screener is super cool it's all done via an, a regular app on your streaming device so roku had a, a paramount global streamers app i created uh, an account sitting on my account were these six episodes and todd i was describing it to you in the pre-roll each episode uh, you get 10 total viewings of it. You can pause as you're watching it, but if you leave the app and come back, that counts as one view. So you can't be like, because I found that out, we watched half of the second episode of these six, and then I came back and like, oh, crap, I got to start it again. And they used, no, it was the first episode, used up my viewing. So the the first three episodes covered stuff you've seen in the trailer. You know, you see Spock with the Klingons. You see the adventure with Kirk and um and Lan um you know and and in what looks like a modern day setting uh the second episode is the trial of uh Una Chin Riley which you saw in the most recent trailer so um my responsibility as someone viewing uh these uh screeners is not to share with you details unfortunately the things that I just dropped you've you've already seen them but I'm super excited I'm I'm trying to pace myself but I will tell you by the end of the weekend I will have watched all six I it just it's just and I, and Adam will, is burning a hole in your pocket. <laughs> I mean, I will, I will, I will tell you, um, it just as a global overview, uh, this season already far, far superior to the first season. Oh, well, that's, oh that's a lot. That's a high bar. I think that, um, and again, this this covers six weeks of content. Um, there's a total of ten episodes. I have heard, but I don't have confirmation that the seventh episode is the much celebrated Lower Decks crossover where we're going to get. Tony Newsome and Jack Quaid as their characters on that show. Um, I can, and once you're set up for a screener, you just get the next one. So I'll be watching that one probably. I'm not sure when, but I'm super excited. Um, extra special shout out uh, to Kurt Krug um, for hooking me up with that. He did also actually hook us up uh, with a celebrity interview with actress Elizabeth Dennehy, which you will be hearing on the personnel files on our Patreon uh, in about a month's time. So yeah. Kurt, you are a Secret Friends Unite superstar. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Salute you with the wrong hand. At, with Sorry. the wrong hand. All right. And to shift gears, um, I, I, I'm kind of excited about this. This will be the third one of these that I back. And it's it's one of those that um, with Hasbro, for example, who makes you can't really see a lot of my you see some of my figures behind me, but the most of them on the other side of the camera. I've been a figure collector for about 10 years. And again, many of our generation enjoyed action figures, but playing with them as kids, you know, as as they're actually intended, but whatever. Um, Hasbro in the last four years uh and todd you and i had a spirited debate of which i ended up on the losing end of it <laughs> with the very first um crowdfunded hasbro Haslab project which was about like i said three or four years ago was the three and three quarter scale katana which was java the hut sailing barge i said oh god there's no way todd said there's no way this is not going to be successful and it was successful we have two friends uh in our inner circle that own one uh yes todd's waving Trying yes. to think of the like the what's the victory thing where you like go oh, oh yeah I don't know what is it oi 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 I have well, no back idea. in the day remember oh, when they back in the, the day the, if you were like highly finger. successful yeah yes um, but anyway you know we have two friends in our inner circle that have them John Sear owns one of those and our and, and my figure collecting uh, partner uh, Derek who is here locally in the Grand Rapids area so anyway I did finally cave when the um, three and three quarter inch GI Joe, because I'm a huge GI Joe fan. The Sky Striker came along. Those were made with the classic O-ring figures. I have that. You can see it behind me here. L watch me tilt. There it is behind me if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, I did sponsor the wildly popular um, six inch scale GI Joe classified series, uh, His Tank, which I should be receiving. Uh, it was about a year ago. I should be receiving that this fall. And 
the has labs are exciting in so much that the more successful they are, the more that you're going to get out of your investment. So the his tank, for example, started with, and really the sky striker as well, started with the basic item first tier ended up with the, with the his tank, getting you a bunch of extra accessories that go on it, but also a figure. Uh, the next tier was another figure. And then the final tier with the his tank was a classically scaled, not currently available at all. Classic Cobra commander with the dome helmet, which I'm very excited about. So this new one, which I immediately just, jumped on there and funded is uh shifts over it's still classified lines so six inch scale shifts over to the gi joe side as opposed to cobra the dragonfly the classic helicopter that's based on what is it is that based on what's the style of helicopter todd i mean you're, uh it's, it's uh oh shit um sorry for the language um ooh, apache yeah, yeah there you go. it's an apache helicopter anyway from the um the classic 1983 so second generation of the gi joe line it's the dragonfly piloted by uh wild bill his code name william hardy um so the it's it's out there now it's been a, it came out just earlier this week todd because i said oh my god it's, it's already taken off i went ahead and jumped on they needed uh 10, 000, uh 10 000 backers to jump into production they got that in the first i think 18 hours and now they're building on it so at third i checked it just before we get on here they're at about i've been saying it in percentages because it's easy to figure out they're at about 123 percent when they hit 130 percent you get your first unlock which is todd it's so weird it unlocks the character Ripcord, which was from Gen 3, the 1984 series. Ripcord had his own arc in the comics. Larry Hama liked this character. He gave him his own story arc, which I, you know what, if you're a reader of the comics, you know what I'm talking about. But he is a halo jumper, high altitude, low opening. And actually, if you look back at the uh, Sky Striker, um, I have the O-ring version of him as well. He's right so it's actually it's the same version of that one. He's just uh, he's just a jumper. Um, and then the third and fourth unlocks, which they'll give us at 160 percent and 190 percent, are currently unknown. They're actually holding those back, which I think is is kind of cool, but it makes me insane. I would like to believe that I would think in the next day or so uh, they're going to hit that 130% mark, and then we'll see what the next unlock is. But these are fun. I mean, I um, I have space for it on my shelves. I'm already looking that G.I. Joe the fig- will have to move to a top shelf because this guy strike or the uh, dragonfly is going to come with a stand, but the thing itself is like 34 inches long. It's big. So, uh, and, and, and again, the his tank is going to show up soon as well. So that'll have to go. So I'll just have to shift stuff around, but you know, it's cool. But again, people are like, Oh God, well, you know, why would they sell it for, you know, 180, 280 bucks, 300 bucks, whatever it is stuff. Uh, this is all, it, it, it's all fun. It's what will people will pay. It's collectible. And it's what people will pay. If you yeah. have a strong, if you have a strong moral objection to about it to you, I respect that. Don't buy it, but you know what? Don't, don't cast aspersions on those I, of us who do. I do. Uh, have a, anyway, I do have a thought on this, Charlie. I was yes, trying please. to think of like, because it seems weird that it's like, um, it's almost like it would be the opposite way. Like, if you're an early adopter, you get all the stuff. So it's almost like to get people in the door quick. Now, they, like, they, if you wait, you get they, less stuff. Yeah, they did. Within and it was either with the Sky Striker here or it was with the Hiss. There was, and I'd have to go back and read it, but there was one of those. Hey, if we hit this mark by this date. Then yeah. it jumped forward and it did something it's something extra because if you look at it and I have them, I'd have to tilt the camera up, but I saved all the cards from because this Sky Striker came with like eight figures. Mm-hmm. But it was one of the you're absolutely right. One of those was hey, if we hit X by X date, then boom, this is unlocked. But if we don't, blah, you know, and then it moved moved on and they they reorganized it a certain way. No, yeah, it's has, so weird, like yeah. oh, because more people got it now. We're giving you more. It's just so weird. I don't know why. Maybe it's because to to do those things, they need more money. Well, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm one would imagine but again it's yeah. like hey how many more people can we get interested in this because yeah, yeah. You, you've hit the mark so you're getting the vehicle plus the pilot now you've hit this so you're getting somebody to sit in the back seat who's also versus, but but versus you know now some, of, some of them have failed so i'm wondering if like if that well, stuff yeah, had been that was, front right. would it have done better i don't know well yeah and the most famous one that that failed that, that we, was certainly here on this show and then between uh john's our other secret friend john sear who was kind of a kind of not really in the figure collecting life anymore but then again my friend Derek we have a chat between the three of us and then Todd you were certainly a part of this as well just ravaging their uh the Rancor Haslab one which failed because the unlocks were just 
absolutely dreadful. Oh, it's a cardboard this plus some bones like it had the like a skull of a tauntaun, which made no sense as an accessory. What? Why would a rancor have eaten a tauntaun? That makes no sense. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, seriously, what? It's just you know, they're just like here's a thing Charlie, we can pick up. We get we get we get seafood from the Pacific Ocean in Minnesota because we like to eat exotic things. Uh, yeah, <laughs> rancor okay, does so too. <laughs> rancor is getting shipments from Hoth of yes, tauntaun. Yes. No, I'm yes. not buying it. I mean, I know Jabba had a lot of money, but you know, that that's the only the finest things for my rancor. For my rancor. <laughs> no wonder he. No wonder he was so pissed when Luke killed exactly. it off. Exactly. Anyway, uh, I'm excited about this. If you'd like to check this out and get on board as well, simply visit the uh, Hasbro or Hasbro Pulse and then click on HasLab and you can uh, jump in the mix. We're getting close to that first unlock. So, all right, I've talked for a long time, so I'm going to go very quickly through this next one because, again, there are three episodes left. I think we've watched one and a half of them, but Superman and Lois over on the CW, which is available on the CW app streaming with commercials, has been canceled, if I'm not mistaken, or they're awfully close, or it's rumored. We don't know if, they, if that's the last one that they haven't announced, because I know Riverdale and some of those shows, Nancy Drew, are all wrapping up like their final season, and we okay. know they're out the door. But yeah, I don't know about, yeah. uh, I'm assuming this is dead too. Yeah, I, I feel like it is, and this is in the second season of it. But again, you know, for those of you who like, you, you loved Arrow, or The Flash, or certainly Smallville was the big one for April and I, um, again, I'm a Marvel guy, but who doesn't love Superman? It's Superman, and, and Smallville, helped all of us of a generation even though that came out in the in the early aughts when todd and i we weren't teenagers anymore and it was a it was a show about a teenage superman it still really caught us and i've watched that series through oh yeah may, may, maybe one and a half times um but anyway superman and lois is great it's about exactly what you would expect it's you know superman and lois lane after they've been married for 15 17 years they've got two teenage sons and all the uh, adventures that happen when they end up back in Smallville when, um, you know, Martha Kent passes away. Um, and yeah, it's, it's what you would expect. It's not high poetry. It is based on Superman and the plot lines are pretty elemental. The villain, uh, in this last half of the second season is played by Chadwick Coleman, who was Tyrese in, in the early seasons of the walking dead. Ah, yeah. So, um, and his, it turns out his wife, uh, is a super villain and it's just, sorry, sorry, sorry for the spoilers, but you know, if you're not watching it now, you're, you're not going to be I watching fell it. Off. <laughs> I fell off the show. I mean, it seemed yeah. good and I, everyone seems yeah. to have an affinity for it. It's just, it's yeah, just I, one of those things where it's like, is the CW going to be around? It doesn't really connect to some of the things. Yeah, and so it it's is, like, mm. yeah, it's hard to invest in it again. That Superman character, uh, version was introduced in supergirl uh yeah. but again it was one of those cross oh it's not on my earth so blah 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 and then all the characters cross over so that's uh i think tyler hockner uh playing mm -hmm. superman and yeah it does like a good it. job he's got yeah. a good look the the five o'clock shadow on super the, the guy acts like he must shave but he always has a five o'clock shadow so he doesn't really shave so one of these guys that their facial hair grows to a certain level and it's just it's just always the same like uh like roy kent on ted lasso it's like a floby for your beard yeah, exactly. It's just one setting, you always it's, have it. Yeah, exactly correct. So anyway, yeah, over there on the CW app uh, for you to check out. And again, I think all episodes are out now because we're on nine of. Well, and they go to HBO yeah. Max now too, which is kind of nice. So oh, you don't yeah, have to worry about the CW and uh, no commercials. Uh, uh, that would be Max, Todd. Oh, that's true. That is true. Or it's right. HBO on Max, so that's it. Ooh, yeah, it's fun. That's right. Or yes. on Prime. Okay, so yes. that's it for me. What do you got? So the newest thing I watched is called FUBAR. This is a series on Netflix. Uh, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger's first foray into a television series. This is essentially True Lies Retirement Edition. But instead of just Arnold being the secret spy, we find out in the first episode, it's not really even a, a surprise. It's part of the premise and trailers. His daughter is also a spy. And he knew nothing about it. That's so, so crazy. Yeah. It's essentially he's about to retire and it's, you know, and he gets brought back in because he has to rescue an operative. And I want to give him more away. But that's the right. premise of the show. That's, that's fun. And I, I did when I was on because I was telling you, I was um, when I'm on the road, I, I I mix up what I'm watching. I don't just watch the Star Trek. So I need to watch uh, to record Code 47. But I was on Netflix watching stand up specials and I did see this noted. So um, all episodes out now, I assume like a 10. Uh, it's 10 yes, episodes, Netflix. Kind of all, all episodes are out. Gotcha. The, I will say the show. The writing is pretty bad. <laughs> it's not <laughs> clever. There's a lot of jokes that are kind of like, did you even try? It's got um, so it's got a couple like side characters who are kind of like supposed to be the comedic 
bent of the show. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the one woman. Uh, she's LGBTQ, got kind of got curly hair, kind of Southern mm-hmm. accent. She's done stand up. She's done stand up stuff. She's OK. Her stuff is just kind of like, wow, as a comedian, I think she should feel embarrassed that she's actually said these things because oh, it's okay. like, I bet she could have wrote better lines for herself. Well, I, really, so, I, I would really like to know who it is because there there is one LGBTQ comedian kind of heavy set with curly blonde hair. Yes, that that's same one? Her. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, she's in the Southern accent. I know exactly. Yeah, who yeah. Right. I mean, she's a funny. She's a funny, funny person. And yeah, the stand-up it just, land, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The cast. Um, I am trying to remember her name. I, I just look it through really, really quick. Can't remember. Um, but I, I watch name, a lot of. I, oh, I watch a lot of. Yeah. Luna in it too. It's got Jay Baruchel. So it's oh, got some good Jay actors. Uh, Fortune Fortune Fem Feimster Feimster is her, is her name. I'm not, and I'm even sure. I watch a lot of just on YouTube. Uh, the the yeah. I, I get thrown clips of Netflix as a joke, which is a, yeah. se- a series they have, and I see her yeah. on there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're right on the, the person. I, I'm assuming we're on the same page. But yeah, it's it's just definitely by the numbers. If you've yeah. seen True Lies, it kind of hits that. Yeah. Just just less well done because you don't have like a great director like James Cameron <laughs> behind well it. Done. The accent feels like it's done on a budget. Um, you see this stuff coming through and. Yeah, it seems like this was more of a paycheck and like, hey, we yeah. just need content than anything else. So yeah. and it was also there was a uh, there's a biography or, or documentary on the history of Arnold where he's involved in on Netflix going on right now. And I'm actually probably more interested in that because I think yeah. it's his career and his in James Cameron's interviewed like all these people are interviewed because of it. They talk ah, about like, James how, Cameron. How, we, how we got pitched to be. It was funny, Charlie, because they were talking about like um that originally it was supposed to be in, in Terminator. It was going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. And there was another actor. And I'm like, really? It's, so it's very, it's very fun documentary. Yeah. So I watched right. a little bit of that. That was better. So that's a better, better thing to spend your time on than FUBAR. Gotcha. Um, okay. okay. Yep. Then uh, finished American born Ch- Chinese. This became a ritual um, uh, during dinner. We watched this and Aww, uh, cool. yes. And we fell in love with the series. It does have its cheesy moments. It is on a Disney plus budget, um, but uh, it's based on, and I'm going to read the trade now because it's, it's essentially wrapped up and I want to, uh, and it ends on a cliffhanger, which I was not sure that was. And I asked Chris, I'm like, is that in the novel? She goes, nope, they're just expanding. And I'm like, okay, I get that. That's kind of cool. Can do more things with this world that they've created, which is kind of neat. Um, it has a lot of touching moments. I will say there's a great redemption arc for Ki Huan Quan, who mm-hmm. essentially, Charlie, he plays an Urkel-like or right, Valky Bartokomo's right, right. character in this. And it kind of, it, it done in the 80s, and they kind of revisit that character. And it's kind of talking about... Um, what it means to be a hero and things like that. And and I thought it was really well done. There's a lot of great touching moments. Um, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, so I, I think it's, if you can overlook some of the quirky and cheesy bits, there's a lot of fun to be here. And I think it's a really good show. I don't know if we'll get a second season because Disney plus, as you know, they've, they've canceled Willow. They've done. Yeah, things. So it's, I it's hope tough. This, they, they're just, yeah, I hope this makes it though. Line. Yeah. I hear you. All right. Yeah. Um, Un- unleash this last one because okay oh my so God. Uh, charlie uh, this is kind of like a, a a teaser for something i am doing so just to let you guys okay. know there will be a new show coming on patreon it's going to call, be called fan so this is kind of exclusive uh and it's going to be where i'm interviewing people that are fans of something and they tell me why kind of give me their history kind of like um, maybe the excuse me i'm right here <laughs> Of Transformers. So I, every, every, uh, no, 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 not about this. But everybody's heard my shit. So but my anyway. first episode will be about Transformers. And while I am a fan, there are people that have bigger fandom. They've covered Correct. it throughout the years. They're fans of like almost all of it, and they find the good along with the bad, uh, and they persevere. So we're going to be going and into it. That's what I do with the, the with the facts geek life. It's good. It's the bad. But anyway, exactly. So it's going to be all aspects of it. Kind of like how did you get into it? But also like your favorite parts, all these different things and kind of like what's the right. most recent thing and what would you recommend as a big fan? So kind of doing those things in Transformers will be our first episode. We have a person that Charlie, you and I used to podcast with a lot. Uh, that person is doing their own thing. And it's going to be unique because uh, they have a different presence on the screen when they do their content these days, kind of like a VTuber. If you've ever seen it where they use an avatar uh, in themselves, it's kind of a cool right. thing. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Okay. Kind of like when we All played right. around with, uh, what was it, Zoom, where you could change your face or it's like those avatars on Apple. Oh, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, so the VTubers. So that's going to be our my first episode, but I will just give you a little tone of, of this, kind of encapsulate it. Um, so Transformers Rise of the Beast, I saw it yesterday. 
Um, I almost fell asleep during it. I don't do that in movies. I'm telling you, it happens. No, it, that happens to you in good movies, Charlie. <laughs> this happens uh, to me in movies. It, I, as it, you said, you, I, you, it's you unqu- said it's yeah. unqualified. I don't know. Yes, it's, yes. That, yeah, but anyway, all right. Fell asleep but, in it. So I'm thinking maybe at the beginning. Not rousing. At the beginning. At the beginning. Um, this, I will say, is it's between. I'd say this movie is. There's not much there unless you're a big Transformers fan, even if you're a big Transformers fan. Um, I'll be curious to see what the person I talked to thinks about the movie as a whole. Um, if you didn't like Bumblebee, this movie is definitely not for you. If you like Bumblebee. But I did. I did. This like is Bumblebee. this is not as good as Bumblebee, but I will say it's not as over the top crazy bay riffic. So it's in between. So this is a movie that I would say don't rush to see it in the theaters. I would say see it on streaming because it'll be on what is it Universal maybe I think I can't remember who made this movie the, the, to be the, honest no they're uh, and that's Paramount so they're Paramount so Paramount Plus. It, it will come there eventually I would say see it there um, but so I it's don't not know. it's not an IMAX spectacular you got to see it on the big screen because I, it's I like, didn't think the action was that impress- impressive impressive yeah. and I I don't think it was and I think the problem with Bay movies so much is happening I couldn't track the action yeah. I couldn't tell what was going on especially with robots that are still kind of not iconic looking because they kind of taken away their color and their shine. Right. So, um, but there is one point, Charlie, I will say like, I think will be highly interesting to you at the very end of the movie, but I don't John, want to say uh, anything no, else. No, 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 John, John jumped out and spoiled it for me because he said, well, oh, you want did, it spoiled. Okay. And I was like, I could care less if I see this. Did he film see or, a story or something about it? Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Cause okay. J- okay. John, did, John didn't see it either. Um, okay. And it was an affirmative eye roll for me. But if you enjoy that kind of thing. But I will say this movie set in 1994. Um, so the ten, needle drops. Ten, are a little, yeah, 10 years after Bumblebee, if I'm not mistaken. Roughly. Bumblebee, yeah. Early 80s. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I think some of the some of the some of the robots are better than others. The human element is much better than the previous films, except for Haley Stein. Uh, Steinbrenner, Steinberg, Steinfeld, not Steinfeld. Stein, there you go. Not Steinbrenner. That's that was the, that was the baseball guy. <laughs> exactly. She she is obviously high mark. Uh, I think she was great. This the cast is do, is is much better. I think. But yeah. once again, there were touch points that I liked. But if you're not a, like a hardcore transformer fan, I think like it is what it is. And uh, yeah, like so it, yeah. It, it's a mixed bag, and not as good as Bumblebee. That's the best way to say it. But better right. for me than the Bay films. That is absolutely fair. All right, cool. Well, with that, uh, it is time to uh, stiff these guys yet again on the check. We got to get out of here. The Air Qantas app is out. The Thunderdome and Hologram Tina do await us. And we are revisiting one of our classic games this week. So let's go. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome. Thank you, Tina. We're sitting in the Thunderdome where the mutants have been gathered for a topic or a game to be entertained. And this week, we're going back to an oldie but a goodie game, and that is the IMDB plot keywords. Yes, the name is complex, but the game isn't. Very Indeed. simple. Uh, the, the goal of this is use the plot keywords with the IMD that explain a movie. So it might be like Indiana Jones. It'd be like adventurer, relic, uh, annoying girlfriend, uh, you know, things like that. And then you eventually... I am speaking those keywords to Charlie, and Charlie will have to guess. Um, it's fairly easy. Just go to IMDb, uh, put in the name of a movie, put plot keywords. It'll take you there, yeah. and you can play yeah, this game with anybody. Netflix. This is great. And now I have mine selected, and I'm going to go ahead and pitch to you first. But I was looking at it, and what it, they've changed it since the last time we did this. It has them ranked by yes. amount of helpfulness. So all I did was scroll to the bottom, and I'm going to read up instead of reading down. Oh, so, that's a good yeah. point. Um, yes. So there's, there's a sort by relevance or alphabetical so i'm just gonna do alphabetical uh no no, no. i no, i did it by relevance and it, it, it put helpful so i'm gonna read you all the ones that say helpful one out of five so it's gonna make it challenging for you i just thought by going alphabetically it'd be like okay i'm not going in anywhere <laughs> except maybe. how they're, they're they're i'm going alphabetical maybe. So. <laughs> yeah all right we'll get ready because i'm gonna pitch oh, you are you ready the, for everyone playing along we're doing yeah. 90s genre so this could be anything yeah, in genre. a genre which is science fiction fantasy I don't know, maybe like noir. I mean, I don't know how far genre I, goes. I think science science fiction fantasy is fine. So, all right, all right. Yeah. Are you yeah. you ready for the pitch? 
I am. So Charlie's going to okay. read off the plot and I have to guess and there's I can guess as many times as I want. Yes, there's no limit. All right, let's do it. OK, here we go. First guess. First first item. Human shield. Oxygen. Black comedy. Impalement. I like that. Surrealism. Uzi, which I assume refers to the handgun. Shootout. Good versus evil. One man army. Hotel. Okay. <laughs> Blood splatter. Fictional war. Oh, I don't let now. Now we're getting to the end. I'm skipping this next one. Uh, Rebel. Virtual reality. Ooh. <laughs> Torture. Oh, boy. Female warrior. We're still in the ones, too. People who didn't find it helpful. Uh, pr prayer. Profanity. That doesn't help. Um, warrior. Wise crack humor. Wise crack, wise cracking, I assume. Hmm. Combat. And I apologize for looking away, listeners. I'm reading it off my other screen. Absolutely. Um, combat. Gun battle, street shootout, gunfight, resistance fighter. None of this is helping, huh? Uh, well, I I try to remember when the movie came out. Um, so I'm thinking yeah. you're thinking of a movie. I, yeah, I no, am no, thinking no, it's, of a movie. It's definitely in the it's, 1990s. Not, uh, two, is it? No, no, no. Uh, woman fighting a woman. Heroin, as in a female hero. Not, not the drug. Not not yep. the drug. Uh, villain. Evil woman, misunderstanding. Oh, so it's Three's Company. <laughs> uh, alien. Now, th these tend to get a little, little easier, so I'm going to try to skip over. Uh, dystopia. We have a brothel. We have a bar. We have a secret agent. Hmm. Cyberpunk. Oh, oh is this... Um, is this Total Recall? Yes. Okay. I was, like, I was just about to get shield. into it. Yeah, of, like, yeah so these yeah. next ones were bad. We had breast, female frontal nudity, breast fondling, and three breasted woman. That would it would have been all the that the, the fondling part I don't remember, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, no, like, and yeah. with the three breasted woman, woman, that'd be Sharon Stone, correct? Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. the three the three breasted woman was uh actress uh, uh Lycia Naff, who had a bit part in Star Trek's next generation. I was gonna say it's always Season comes two? back to the, the six and degrees then, of Star Trek should be a game you guys she, played early on she, oh, yeah. she showed up in uh, lower decks as well as uh, as a, a starfleet captain so okay <laughs> that's me I yay am, me yay you i go win for go for it okay okay uh <laughs> this is this is great because i'm going alphabetically um 1990s okay. of course um okay. ooh, that one's too close um address book okay apartment artist Betrayal. Blockbuster. Um, You've got mail. <laughs> bright light. Cameo. Charlatan. Chick flick. And it's a genre uh, film? Uh, city. Okay. Computer cracker. Not a hacker. A cracker. <gasps> uh, so it's, so it's, not, it's not hackers? Uh, no corruption couple crying cult film damsel Natu in distress natural born killers danger dance deception <gasps> pulp fiction, um, pulp fiction. Drug dealer pulp fiction no <gasps> embezzlement oh god this is <laughs> i don't even want to say this one <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> Erection showing through clothes. <laughs> what is that you do? <laughs> so Escape. is 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 this there something about Mary? No, uh, it's not a comedy genre. So that's oh, that, okay. the, the genre of comedy is not included. So uh, famous scene, famous score, fatal car accident. Oh, fear, Forrest Gump, female artist. Remember genre. Because I'm really just a Fire sensitive escape. artist. Frantic. Friend. Funeral. Good versus evil. Goodbye. 
grave side service, grief, gun, gunfire, gunshot, gunshot wound, <laughs> alphabetically. <laughs> Heaven, wow. All, all hell, the guns. Hit by a car. Home intruder. Hugging. Hugging impalement again. <laughs> impalement is a great one. Oh it's very, God. very heavy. Uh, investigation. Invisibility. Kicking a can. <laughs> Kiss. Let's get back to what we consider genre, because now sure. I'm like, okay, so genre, absolutely um, science fiction, fantasy. I Because if I give you too much of the genre elements, it will be a little too clear. I'm going to try to find something. Uh, out of body experience. Um, passing through a wall. Possession. Ghost. Bingo. Yay. There we it go. A, see, it is a genre because it's because I'm like, I'm trying to stay away from like supernatural ghosts. Where and, you know, the hell was there a boner in this movie? I'm thinking about this. <laughs> I think it might be the the guy. Remember the guy that was uh, that, oh, the, 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 the bad guy? Tony, Tony Gold. Yes. Tony, it might, I, it might have been Tony him Gold. or he was maybe because was he trying Tony to hit Gold on one? Demi Moore at the time? Yeah, that was he tried to. I'm it, guessing yeah, that's probably yeah, what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. Ghost. Na, na, na. Yes. Na, na, yes. Na, well, that's na, a famous na, song. Yeah. At least so you I, didn't say uh, pottery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was part of like, <laughs> that's be further down. Yeah. I, I don't know if alphabetically was helpful or not because it's no. intermixed with relevancy. Well, so, yeah, yeah, I liked it. The re- like with the relevance I did. I read. I From read all the up. way up, but yeah. those ones that were voted one for relevance were uh, clearly no help. So oh, it, okay. it was, it was, yeah. Cause when I got, you know, you got it right before I got to breast fondling, which that was the, <laughs> and then the three breasted woman, which yeah. is a dead giveaway. A, a oh yeah. Dead giveaway. As far as is, I know, there's not yeah. many of those creatures in any other type of genre. Right. Yeah. Not, a, not a lot yeah. of three breasts. Well, this was good. And again, this is one of our regular games. We play these uh, on a schedule so that we don't do them too often. Uh, so this one goes back into the can. I don't have the schedule or the uh, the grid up, so I don't know what's next. But we trying to slip these in in between, you know, not busy periods because we didn't have a movie to talk about this week or some burning topic. But uh, absolutely, yeah. But so, again, um, yes, you can always play at home. And if you got uh, it before yeah. we did, let us know. Yeah, please add us, uh, add us over on Twitter at uh, Secret Friends U, or hit us up on our Discord. And with that, uh, that's the end of the show, friends. Uh, as always, thank you for joining us. Todd, where do people find you out there? Oh, they follow me at T Oxtra for all the fun in the world of video games and such, uh, sports and things like that. Obviously, the football season, we're getting all the player stuff going on, so I'm very excited about that. But actually, I've been watching the NBA Finals, too, so I may Ooh. even uh, peek about that because it's on ABC, and I can watch that through um, my Tableau. Uh, but other than that, yeah, uh, all things Secret Friends Unite. Uh, obviously, the best way to support us is to go to patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite. Check us out. Get a free trial. If you like it, stick around. If you can't afford it, it's not in your it's not in your budget. Tell people about it, and then also Please. rate our podcast, subscribe on YouTube, and um, if you want all of our content, go to secretfriendsunite.com. You got it, and you can of course uh, find me on Twitter at the C three. Go ahead and spell it out. Uh, my lovely wife April and I do run the USS Grand Petoskey, one of the biggest chapters of the International Star Trek Fan Club in the world. Uh, I also run Region Thirteen, which is Michigan and Eastern Canada. If you are a trekker uh, there or anywhere, please visit our website or find us on all socials. Drop us a line, uh, and I would love to connect you with trekkers where you live. Hot young singles in your area? No trekkers. Uh, uh, friends, again, thank you for joining us. I'm going to tell you, as always, that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. In a truck. Whoopi Goldberg is a national treasure. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server, or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.